Well, today is uh, Wednesday, April 19th, 2023. We're, this week in our video devotionals here at Covenant Keepers Ministries, we're talking about obedience. And adults, we have to lead the way for children so they can see from our modeling, our parenting, our grandparenting, that we practice what we preach, what we teach. In 1 Samuel 15, 22 and 23, Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you've rejected the word of the Lord, he's also rejected you from being king. And Samuel was saying this to Saul, who was then king. In Colossians 3.20, it says, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. So today I want to talk about this aspect of discipline. That is, when we rebelled. See, he said rebellions like the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity, transgression, and idolatry, we've erected something in place of our obedience, and we're gonna follow that, whether it's the lust of our flesh, the lust of our eyes, or the pride of life. So here's what we need to know. When God sees us doing this, he chastens those he loves. When parents see their children aren't obedient, they discipline them, they chasten them. I'm not gonna talk about the process of what you do to discipline your child in your home. That's your responsibility to learn the best way to do it. For your children, follow the word of God. So here's what we do know. We all know, me included, that our hearts are deceitful and desperately wicked. Our flesh does not want to abide by the restraints and regulations put upon us, even those established by our culture for our good. So when we don't like the rules, the regulations, or the commands of God, whatever, our government, and we disobey, and we get caught, because let's just be honest, sometimes we don't get caught, although the Spirit of God in us is saying, less, here's the way walk in it, shows us Jesus, and we have been walking according to what Jesus would have us walk. Just him showing us Jesus lets us know that. So take a for instance, if you're speeding and you're caught, you're gonna receive a fine. I know sometimes, the police officer has grace and lets you off, and, but there's a penalty and you pay it. Now, today in, in our culture, that's not a little thing because if you're just going a few miles over the speed limits, it could be painful to get that ticket. Depending on how we respond, the pain of pain, that fine can be extremely painful. If you get a fine over $100, which most of them seem to be, not that I've gotten any here, you're already in a pinch financially. That's a lot more pain to pay that speeding ticket. And why does our government do this? Why do they enforce speeding laws? Now, that's a rhetorical question. You know why. It's not meant to bring more pain or make you have a burden financially. It's too inflict enough pain on you in the hopes you'll decide to slow down and not violate that regulation again. Now, you don't have to agree with me, but that's basically, or at least that should have been the intent of the law. And by the way, adults, they, they pay the price for disobedience at work. Some get fired because they didn't comply. They didn't obey the command. Adults pay the price at home when they don't demonstrate obedience. Their kids go haywire or disobey them. And, and then they look at you and say, you did it. If you own a business, you don't comply. You pay the price. And by the way, there's an intent in the church, the called out, the ecclesia, the called out ones to be separate from the world, that there was always some constriction. There was some price to pay. If you didn't obey, you were going to be confronted and in some cases, it says leaders should be rebuked before all the rest when they didn't. And uh, man, I think that's been lost somewhere clear back in the 60s for most churches. They don't discipline their members. They don't chasten them. 
and they don't, there's no pain caused. It's just grace, 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 sloppy agape, I call it. Well, parenting's no different. There's a price to pay. And in your home, there has to be some form of discipline that inflicts pain of some kind that prevents a child from violating the commands that we put upon our children for their good, for their blessing. Now listen to me carefully about this. This implies that we've carefully thought through the regulations for our home, the commands in our household. And you know you have an infallible guide for that in the Bible. And the regulations in our home should be based upon the word of God. <laughs> and they include the Ten Commandments summed up in the two commands of Matthew twenty-two thirty-six 36 through 40. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's the gist of the, those verses in chapter 22 of Matthew, verses 36 through 40. When our child or our children do not live according to the regulations, the commands, we inflict the appropriate pain with the desire to restrain their future conduct and help them reap the benefit and blessing of God plus the benefit and blessing of their parents. So we're not disciplining for discipline's sake and we're not disciplining because we're exhausted, we're just wore out, we can't hear it anymore. Or we're angry. Don Stamp says discipline has uh, as its goal the elimination of folly, rebellion, and disrespect for parents. But I think since we got parents that haven't grown up yet, some of that discipline for them, that chastening, is for the very same reason. Get the folly out of a 35-year-old and the rebellion out of a 40-year-old and the disrespect for authority out of a 28-year-old. And so adequate parental discipline administered in a wise, loving, and considerate manner helps children to learn that wrong behavior carries unpleasant consequences and may involve suffering. Proverbs 29, 15. Such discipline is necessary lest children form attitudes that later bring more ruin and more death to their life. Read it in Proverbs 19, 18, Proverbs 23, 13, or 14. See, godly discipline in a family will bring happiness and peace to the home. Proverbs 29, 17. It must also be administered out of love just as the Heavenly Father does in Hebrews 12, 6 and 7 and Revelation 3, 19. I know I'm giving you a lot of scripture to look up, but it'll be worth it if you do it. Don stamps for the comments on Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in what he should go and when he's old, he will not depart from it. And, in, and Don Stamp says this, parents must commit themselves to the godly training and discipline of their children. And the Hebrew word for train means to dedicate. Thus, Christian training has, has its purpose, the dedication of our children to God and his will, accomplished by separating them from evil influences and of the world and by instructing them in godly contact. And the same root word can also mean to cultivate a taste for Parents must encourage their children to seek God for themselves and thus to enjoy genuine spiritual experiences they will never forget. And I'm so thankful my parents did that for me because I had some experiences through my growing up days from my earliest recollections, time at the altar, 8, 10, 12, 16, 18 years of age. And just they're milestones in my spiritual growth. And so what we're doing through the discipline, although it's inflicting pain, because maybe we removed something from their life. Let's just say we took away their cell phone. And I don't know why a five-year-old has one, but I guess some do today. It's my opinion. It's not mentioned in the Bible, I guess. But at some point, we take away something so they'll know, hey, we want you to move closer to God, and this is preventing it. And if they say, well, man, I, you're on yours all day long. Oh, some growing up for the adults. And we're trying to cultivate in our children a desire for the Lord. So I got to ask you a couple questions. I know sometimes this seems lengthy. I, but we need to ask them, how does discipline occur, occur in your home? How does it occur for you in your personal life? Is the discipline in your home done according to the word of God? 
And are your children responding when they didn't obey the commands? And if not, why not? And if you haven't responded to the rebellion in your life that God's chastened you about, how can you expect your children to? And if it's not working, how do you continue to be consistent, not slack off, and help point your children to God if you're working with a child? And how about you as an adult? How are you working that out? Oh, Father, these, these things are just so important in a culture that lacks discipline and lacks obedience and, and guidelines and commands just seem arbitrary to everybody. We set our own rules and what you think about it doesn't count. But you're ultimately the God who rules this universe. And we put our lives as Christians in your hands. And I'm asking you to help me to be obedient out of the grace you provide for me and out of the love that you've saturated me with. And I pray for those who watch these videos, the same supernatural happening in Christ's name. Amen. Got a challenge for you today. Obey God. Live well pleasing to him. Do it every minute of the day. God bless you as you do so.